everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, welcome. I'm Camilla and this is Hasty Books. In this channel, I talk about all the books that I read because I love to read books and I love to talk about books. And if that's what you're looking for, then you're in the right place and thanks for joining us. As we are about just a little past mid-November, I thought I would share some nonfiction recommendations. We are in the midst of nonfiction November, so you know what a better time than to talk about some of the nonfiction that I've really enjoyed over the last few years, give you recommendations for, you know, maybe you've already read through your TBR, you know, <laughs> if you weren't as ambitious as me. And if not, you know, if you're fully booked for the month like I am, then maybe these will just be added to your TBR for further months. I know that I really enjoy reading nonfiction, maybe you know, a little bit every month, you know, dotted here and there. I usually try to have maybe one a month or two, but you know, some stuff does take a little bit longer to read when it's a bit scientific anyway, for me, because I have a very artsy brain. So for the future and for anyone who may be interested in these topics, let's dive into my nonfiction recommendations. In number one, let's start with one that I know many people have adored and that many of you will hopefully like as well, and that is Becoming by Michelle Obama. This is a book that kind of made me really appreciate autobiographies. So I'm not a big fan of biographies or autobiographies, unless I guess it's a personality that I really like or that I'm kind of very interested into their journey or their growth. And I picked up the audiobook for Becoming, which was read by Obama herself, and it was so good. It talks about the way that she grew up, and I, that was honestly for me some of the most interesting bits about her growing up in Chicago, her, I guess, family life, you know, where she came from, her father, her mother, her brother, and the community she grew up in. And then obviously it goes into her, you know, evolution into a lawyer and then becoming the first lady of the United States. So it is quite an interesting book. There's so much packed in. Um, politically speaking, obviously I know loads of people very polarized and if you're maybe right when you will hate Obama, anything, but I don't think that the book goes that much into politics rather than, I guess, a lot into values and wanting to do good for society and for the community. And I think that that's really beautiful in the way that she's approached this book and wanting to be part of the change, you know, and I really like that. So that's a big, big recommend from me. Next, we have Quiet by Susan Cain. And I've mentioned this before. If you've seen my video of some of my favorite books, I had a nonfiction kind of version of that um, list. And this was on it because I think this is one of the books that made me um, dive further into nonfiction. And I think it's because I really saw myself in this. So the underline here is the power of in introverts in a world that can't stop talking. And I am a very, very big introvert coming from a family of introverts. And it was really beautiful to see the strength that we have in ourselves. I think, you know, I've always been told that I'm quite quiet and in... I think high school, like I was told like, oh, really sometimes that's like a power, that's like a, a strength. And I was just like, I guess, and I wasn't really seeing it. And I didn't understand how my energy and like my way of approaching others and have my relationships, how much that was also linked to my introvertedness. So this book was really, really good. I think it's a big one if you're an introvert and you're proud of it. I think this is a great one to pick up and kind of read across different experiences and different analysis of, I guess, how we approach um, the outside world and the inner world, I guess. Then let's go into another audiobook that I listened to, which was All That Remains by Sue Black. So I listened to this one over the summer. It is such a fascinating book. Um, Sue Black narrated herself as well. So I really, I really like that actually when the person who wrote it gives their voice to it. I feel like it's even more personal. So she's a professor of anatomy and forensic anthropology here in Scotland. This was her first book published in 2018, I believe. And um, the kind of tagline is a life in death. She's obviously helped with um, 
I want to say the recovering and identification of remains and like in tsunamis and like crisis and war and all of that kind of stuff and as well just like murders and I think she worked in Scotland universities and she also in this book talks about her work in uh, preserving bodies for educational purposes obviously and um, the fact that people obviously donate their bodies to science for medical students to learn and that's that was really beautifully approached and I'd never even thought about it before. It is honestly, I could talk about all the things I've learned about this book uh, in this book like forever because it's so, so good. It's a very, very big recommend and that's kind of a field that you're interested in if you're interested in death as well because I know I have very big fear of death. <laughs> so this was very interesting perspective to kind of get because she's just like, She's like ready for it. She's like, when it comes, you know, I I want to feel it and I want to live it. It's just so interesting. Anyway, you have to read it or listen to her audiobook. Actually, it was just really good. And I think she, in 2020, published a second book, which was Written in Bone, Hidden Stories in What We Leave Behind, which I will definitely be picking up as well. And we're staying with another local gal. So we'll go with Findings by Kathleen Jamie. She is a poet and I think she's a creative writing professor at our local university. She is, actually she's just been appointed the um, Scotland's new Macar. So she's putting together this like massive poems for 2021. Anyway, there's loads about Kathleen Jamie. I've read two of her books and I'm very excited for the third one, which I've not um, had my hands on yet. But I read this one last winter and it is a series of essays about nature and our relationship with it. The way that we observe things, the way that we find things. And it is looking at the minutia of things. And I guess finding beauty in these small things that surround us and that we potentially, you know, don't pay attention to or don't think are important. And I thought this book was fabulous. She also has a second one, which is sightlines that's it i read that one this summer i didn't love it as much because i was a bit more about the larger um archaeological history our place in the world uh, i like kind of the detail of this one and her third one i believe is surfacing which is the one that i have not yet had a chance to read but uh it's very exciting as for nature writing in scotland i think this is a really big one and this made me want to read more nature writing which i think is a feet <laughs> so yeah a really good start if you're not really into nature writing i think this one is a really really good one to maybe get your hands on and try because it is really good next i want to talk about british by afa hirsch i also listened to the audiobook of this one narrated by hirsch herself as well and i thought it was really good it really i guess opened my eyes to a lot of the racial um uh, problems I guess in Britain. It was really really interesting to combine the idea of race and identity because I feel like in I guess in a lot of white countries <laughs> um, there's always that question like oh where are you really from and all that stuff and it's really interesting because she comes from a mixed background and she's always felt like she didn't belong to either of those backgrounds um, like heritage and I quite related to that. Obviously, I really love to read stuff about um, mixed cultural heritage and the idea of belonging, which is part of the tagline, is actually on race, identity and belonging. And yeah, that that topic is something that really, really interests me because I guess I've always felt in between worlds, um, you know, growing up with different cultures and not being an immigrant. So yeah, it's really, really interesting. And she does actually end up moving to Africa and becoming that kind of trying, immigrant trying to go home. And it's just really, really fascinating the um, perspective that she brought to that aspect. And that's also why it made me want to read more, um, I guess, travel writing or immigrant kind of tales from people of color. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of a book I'm, I've currently started, which is um, Maya Angelou's um, All of God's Children Need Traveling Shoes, which is part of her autobiography. So yeah, very, very interesting. I think uh, UK-based people who are interested in race and identity will probably enjoy this one. 
I believe that uh, for her, she's a journalist, so her writing is really good, and the kind of interviews that she does and the case studies that she utilizes are just spot on. Then let's go into maybe something a little bit more lighthearted. So this is Running Like a Girl by Alexandra Hemingsley. And this one I've also talked about in my favorite nonfiction books. This is, oh, I love this book so much. And I think I should reread it because I think at different stages of your kind of running journey, you get at different things in this book. So I started running a couple of years ago and loads of my friends um, recommended this one. I was like, okay, running like a girl is this funny concept. And I ended up picking it up because I took running up a bit more seriously and I absolutely loved it. And it is a story of Alexander Hemingsley of State's Nonfiction. So it's her life and she decides that she wants to run a marathon and like from scratch, which I really appreciate because I feel like a lot of sports books are like people who are already at a level that is not relatable for our, us mere mortals who have zero fitness. So I think that this book really did that for me where it's like, oh, running a 5k is really, really tough. And I was at that stage where I was trying to run up to 3 or 5k and I was really struggling. So I could really relate. So I think if you're early into your running journey, if you're doing you know, couch to 5k or like just trying to pick it up and you're like, oh, I fucking hate it. <laughs> then I think this one is a great one, and especially obviously for women. I think it talks a little bit about the different things like, you know, sports bras. I know when I bought a sports bra last year, it changed my life literally. So I think that these are really important things to think about. Anyway, I won't go to the details, but this is a very relatable book. Again, uh, Hemingway, I believe, is a journalist, so her writing is really, really good. And I love like all of the different things she mentions. It's just, yeah, very, very great. And her second book, I just want to mention it. It's kind of more an honorary mention, um, which is Leapin, A Woman, Some Waves, and The Will to Swim. So this was her second book, I believe. And obviously it's about swimming. I'm hoping she does one about cycling. So that is the whole, you know, triathlon trio. Um, her third book was actually about the fact that her um, husband came out as trans and transitioned and um, kind of, yeah, the dealing with that and their son and their relationship and stuff like that, which I think is apparently very beautiful and respectful and I want to pick it up at some point. The next book that I want to recommend is Mongol by Ugana Ramsey. This book I read earlier this year and it was really, really fascinating. Like it touched me. I learned so much. There's just a lot in that book. So Ramsey is from Mongolia and this talks a lot about her growing up in kind of a rural community in Mongolia. I thought that was really great because you know just learning about the traditional way of life for people from Mongolia is just fascinating and it kind of also is parallel with her life in Scotland. So she met I believe her husband is Scottish and she moved to like Glasgow or near Glasgow whatever and had her children and her third child, I believe, if I remember correctly, um, is diagnosed with Down syndrome. And at that point, they're really unsure if he had Down syndrome or not. It took a bit of time to diagnose him because of his Mongolian features, is what they say. And then obviously it ties the link of the fact that Mongol was uh, a word that people used to use as an insult for people who had learning difficulties, people with Down syndrome, etc. I think it's so interesting here, like the, the two ways that she's reconciling dealing with her child's diagnosis, but obviously her own identity, and that's why both narratives are parallel. Yeah, it was really, really beautifully written. It was fascinating about her, the, the cultural aspects, and I think there's that personal touch of the family life and dealing with illness and grief and all of that. So it's a lot, and I think it's quite short actually, this book. So yeah, she packs a lot in this and I think it is a must read really. Next, we are going into a little bit of like the feminist stuff. It is How to Be a Heroine by Samantha Ellis. So it's or what I've learned from reading too much, which I think we can all relate to. <laughs> so in this, I read this, oh God, I read this in my mid twenties and I think it was a good time, but I think I would really enjoyed reading this now or I feel like I need to read all of these first and then I would get a lot more from this book but it's really interesting the way she revisits 
the different um, heroines of books that she loved growing up and what she's learned from them and um, about, I guess, becoming a woman or, you know, just a person. <laughs> And it, is, it was so good. I think it's a really good one to read, especially when you're younger, because it is so much about like becoming who you really are, who you want to be, or, you know, all of that aspect. And these great examples that we've had since hopefully childhood or, you know, from university or whatever, you know, when you're reading all of this. And I think it's great to have these examples. And I think, you know, I talked about recently Jane Eyre being just this amazing character. And I... Think that this is one of the beautiful things about reading is that we can relate and we can have models like that and in this book she kind of takes that idea and goes with it and tells us what she's learned and i actually this is making me want to reread it so much right now actually um but yeah really really good then we have yale needs women by anne gardner perkins yes that's great <laughs> And this book I got, it's a bit random, I think it was on NetGalley, I got an ARC and I thought it sounded interesting. It's about basically the first class, uh, the first co-ed class at Yale University in the US. And is the transition from being an all-male school to yeah, be becoming co-ed and welcoming the first group of women. And it was honestly so, so good. I think it's one of these books that's really made me enjoy like the historical aspect of nonfiction. So she goes through like um, different articles and talks and police records because let's be honest it did not go as well as we'd all hoped for in our society. So it was very at times brutal and harrowing and honestly horrible and awful but at times really hopeful you know that there is that need for for everyone to be catered for, you know, in these, in these public institutions. Oh God, I guess it's not public. Anyway, but just, you know, in our society that we should all be there on equal footing, but the way that societies, especially white patriarchal societies are not quite ready for that. And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, we'll bring this, these people in. And then the whole community and I guess like societal pattern is not quite ready to have changed or is not ready to accommodate, um, and leaving place for someone doesn't mean that suddenly everything is fixed. And yeah, so this book was so, so good. I really, really enjoyed it. I recommend it for people who are interested in, you know, education, um, feminism, just all of these kind of little ties of equality and especially at the university level, even at the, I guess, institutional level. Finally, we're getting to my two token white men um, <laughs> books that I've included in this list. The first one is Sushi and Beyond by Michael Booth. I read this one many years ago. I believe it came out in 2008. Oh gosh, okay. I read it later than that, I believe. But I really, really loved it. Basically, um, he's a travel and food writer. And this in this particular book, he moves to Japan with his family. I think it's his two sons and his wife. Um, I don't remember because it's been so long. But the whole family moves there and it's their experience as a family. And that's what I really enjoyed about this travel writing is that it included the experience of his children. And including, obviously, this is highly focused on Japanese food. So anyone who enjoys reading about food will enjoy this, especially if you like Japanese food. I know that I certainly do. And this book made me want to go to Japan for that kind of culinary experience as well as cultural and yeah, so this was really good. And I think this is one of the books that I also made me realize a bit like with Afra Hirsch's book that I had read quite a lot of travel writing that was heavily influenced and written by white men. And that's kind of made me go on this journey that I'm currently on of reading more um, travel narratives by women, especially women of color and of marginalized communities. And I really found like there's a different theme that is being explored by this these people and it's so so fascinating and it's something that like I said with Afrohesh's book of belonging and it's that theme that I think that I can relate to and that's really really fascinating and I will be coming up with a video about it very soon. <laughs> Finally the last book on my list is This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. I really enjoyed this book. I read it a couple of years ago. I think it was just pre-pandemic like 2019 or something. I bought the book, read it and 
just it, it I cried I laughed like hysterically me and my husband still have like a running gag about the degloving incident that happens in this book which you can only know about if you've read it because it's horrible um yeah it is so interesting to read his I guess it's the diary of a junior doctor he's not a doctor anymore and a lot is explained through this book on why and it's very interesting to think about this like now that we're in the pandemic after the last two years to think about this and look at the way that doctors have dealt with all of this and the pressure and including nurses that they had to deal with so really incredible this is such a great book i know there's loads of other kind of doctor diaries and like you know um <laughs> of different kinds i have one actually on my tbr which is about female doctors in saudi arabia i believe i don't remember the name but that's definitely my tbr so yeah a very interesting perspective really really hilarious i believe that he's become a bit like a performer and comedian and you really can feel that in his book because it's really funny so it has like that balance of horrible illness disease death and everything with that balance like very british self-deprecating humor i also wanted to give a special mention to the opposite of loneliness by marina keegan so not the whole book but just the essay because uh, most of the book is actually um fiction short stories but her essay at the beginning which is entitled the opposite of loneliness is so so beautiful i bought this book when i heard that she would passed away so we would have been the same age she graduated from yale as i've just mentioned in the previous book um in 2012 and very shortly after five days after graduation passed away in a car accident and i guess it was like that horrible you know life cut short moment and horribleness you know the essay is so so beautiful i believe it's the essay um i know that was published yes yeah, so this is the last essay she wrote for the yale daily news the opposite of loneliness which then ended up going viral um she i think really really captures the essence of what you feel when you are 21 22 and you've just graduated this i think especially this essay is a must read for people of that age and that's why i really wanted to mention on on booktube because i know like quite a lot of people are a bit younger but this is such a beautiful idea of being in this together of the hope of the future and of possibilities and you know i mean i mentioned it because at that age i think it's very salient but at any age it's very very relevant um it's just that you have this kind of openness to the world when you graduate university or that you feel you have that anyway the start of real life you know and all that so yeah i did want to just give it a quick mention all right like all of my current videos we are um running out of daylight so i'm gonna end this video thank you so much for watching i would love to get any of your own nonfiction recommendations if you've read any of the books i've mentioned i'm always keen to hear what you thought as well and just you know for you to say hello and in the meantime enjoy your reading and hey see you back bye